Good afternoon, church family. This is Margie Mayer. Um, and I do say good afternoon because it is afternoon for me, but good morning if it is when you're listening to it. Um, I'm going to continue probably just this last week for just a little mini series that I've been uh, uh, recording, just uh, going through the first couple of chapters of Genesis. And uh, today we'll be in Genesis 6, but let's pray first. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you so much for your word. I just thank you for um, the promises that you have in it for us. And even though um, what we're going to be reading is years and years and years ago, it's still relevant then as it is today. And we just thank you that your word never changes. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, um, Genesis 6. <clears throat> and this is a story uh, of Noah, and it's continuing from my last Devo. As I said, um, the story of Noah is a story of judgment, and it's a story of salvation. As you um, can see clear, it's a warning or encouragement, and that's what the title of my message today is, a warning or encouragement. And it depends on where you stand with Christ. The earth was no longer the perfect paradise that God had intended it to be. It is frightening to see how quickly all of humanity forgot about God. Incredibly, it is in all of the world only one man in his family still worshiped God. That man was Noah. Because of his faithfulness and obedience, God saved him and his family from the vast flood that would destroy every other human being on earth. This section of scripture shows us how God hates sin and judges those who enjoy it. Verse 3 uh, in the New Living Translation says, My spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time, as they are only mortal flesh. In the future, their lifespan will be no more than 120 years. Just to note here, before the flood, people lived much longer lives. Noah was 500 years old when he begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And I read that he was about 600 years old when he started building the ark. God was allowing the people of Noah's days 120 years to change their sinful ways. This also shows us his patience with man today because he does not want any of us or any to perish, but to come to repentance. But time eventually ran out. The flood waters began to sweep across the earth. Um, once the waters began to rise, the inhabitants on the earth began to realize all that Noah had been warning them about uh, of their uh, to come to their own salvation. It was true, and he was wanting them to preserve their life. But they did not heed his warnings, and when the doors of the ark were closed, it was too late. In 2 Peter 2, verse 5, the Bible says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness when we can assume that he was wanting those around him to be saved, to repent from their sins. Chapter 7 describes the great flood. Chapter 8 reminds us that God kept remembering Noah. Not that he didn't just set him out on the boat to float around the world, um, but he never forgot about him. And he kept him and his family and the animals safe. When the waters receded, the waters dried up. Noah removed the covering of the ark and walked out on dry land. And the very first thing that Noah, or that Noah did was to build an ark. I just wanted to read a couple of um, scriptures. And it is um, out of the New Living Translation. It's uh, in chapter 8, verses 20 through 22. Then Noah built an ark to the Lord. And there he sacrificed as burnt offerings the animals and birds that had been approved for that purpose. And the Lord was pleased with the aroma of the sacrifice and said to himself, I will never again curse the ground because of the human race, even though everything they think or imagine is bent towards evil from childhood. I will never again destroy all living things. As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, cold and heat, summer, winter, day and night. In my last Devo, 
or the very first one, I'm sorry, the Bible, the beginning, I mentioned that the word covenant was um, a key word or um, uh, um, message in Genesis. And we can be sure that the covenant that God made in his heart, that he, that when he placed the rainbow in the sky after the flood still holds for us today, that he will never again curse the, gro the ground with the flood again. Today, it's not too late to receive salvation. The events of Noah is not only a warning, it's a great encouragement, but it's where you stand in Christ, judgment or salvation um, from the wrath to come. That's going to end my little series that I have really enjoyed going through that. Um, I really hope that it sparked an interest of you to go back and read the first uh, few verses of Genesis, or even it's just the whole book of Genesis, the beginning. And it just encourages us as we walk. It's still relevant today. And the Lord is uh, so gracious and he wants all of us to come to know him. And let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for um, this, just this time, just being in your word and just how much you want each one of us to come to know you as our personal savior so that none of us would be lost. And Lord, I just pray for those who are listening, that their ears would be um, open, that their heart would be open. And if it falls on anyone who hasn't received you, Lord, I just pray that um, you would continue to work in their heart and just be with them, be with each one of us as we walk towards you. In Jesus' name, amen.